So I'll start that. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. I have a little presentation um, that I'll go through and then uh, answer any questions that you might have um, and, and sort of talk a little bit about where we go from here. So um, just give me a second. All right, um, I should give credit first of all. So uh, most of the photographs in this entire presentation are the work of um, Frau Cooper, a math teacher at our high school. Uh, she's been on the Costa, Costa Rica trip several times and she's a great photographer. So lots of these photos are from her. And this is, this is one of them, this uh, tree frog that you see on the initial screen. So um, what I wanna do today is sort of um, give you a little bit of an overview of the trip. Um, talk a little bit about why we're going to Costa Rica. Um, go through sort of a daily schedule of what the trip will entail. I'll talk a little bit about the cost and how that's structured. Um, and then talk about some logistics and sort of the next steps and where we go from here if, if you're interested in the trip. So that's sort of the, the setup. It, this should maybe be a half hour or so, I would guess. Um, to start, this is the second time I've done this. So I'll just give you a little background. Um, so initially I offered the trip to only students that were enrolled in AP Environmental Science this year or are currently enrolled next year. Um, and typically that's the way we start with this trip and that's the way it's been done in the past. Uh, it's a trip that focuses on environmental science, on sustainability, on ecosystems, um, and it's, it's really geared towards an environmental science bent. Um, so after, after that meeting, I had about eight or nine students that were potentially interested and that's, that's not enough students to, to run a trip like this. Um, so that's when I decided I would open it up to other students that are not currently um, taking or enrolled in eight to call it for short, AP Environmental Science. Um, and then I got a ton of um, interest. So I think by my last count, there were 42 or 43 students had expressed interest, um, which is great, um, but I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. It, it does worry me a little bit because I really, it's really important to me that the focus of this trip is on environmental science, on ecology, on wildlife, on sustainability. Um, and so what sometimes I wonder about is, will I get a whole bunch of students that are just sort of looking for a fun vacation? And yes, this is gonna be super fun and it's gonna be awesome, but I really want, the students that decide to attend to really have an interest in um, ecology, in the environment, in sustainability, um, so that you know the entire trip is valuable to them. And so I kind of went back and forth in my head, and you know, do I open this up this widely? This is a lot of students. What if only a third of the students on the trip, you know, are actually taking the course? Um, and I came down on the side of yeah, I think it does make sense to offer it more widely. Um, in my view. Um, Anytime students can get exposed to the things that we'll see in Costa Rica is a positive for their worldview, for their concern for the earth, um, for their perspective on the world. Um, maybe it, it grabs their interest and they decide to take environmental science, you know, in their senior year. Um, so that's sort of where I fell is that, yes, I will open the trip up more widely to the students that have expressed interest, but I just want to make sure that that's, and I'll talk about this in the future as well to the students that decide to go on the trip is that um, our focus really is on, on those things. Um, I want students that are curious. I want students that are interested, that want to learn, that want to have a, an unbelievable experience. Um, and so um, that's where we stand. So yes, I, I think I will take the students that want to go, the students that commit uh, on this trip. And I, I think, you know, I, I know almost every single one of these students from my past life at Perry Junior High. Uh, and so it looks like a great group of, group of kids. So um, if most of them uh, decide to go, I will be really happy. So that's just sort of my caveat. I did want to be upfront and honest about that, that this is an environmental science trip. 
Um, so why are we going to Costa Rica? So this is just to give you my background in case you don't know me. Um, I was taught at Perry Junior High for 21 years. Uh, this is my first year I moved to the high school. Uh, I replaced Mr. Parity, if that's possible. I'm now teaching AP Environmental Science. He was always the teacher of apes previous to this. He had run five different trips to Costa Rica uh, with the group, and you probably have heard about some of those. Um, and so he was doing a trip last year as well that obviously got canceled. Um, my daughter was supposed to go on that trip as well. Um, and so I decided once I saw how things were progressing this year, as we got through a, sort of that rough time we had in the winter, I decided that next spring 2022, it is reasonable to expect to be able to do a trip like this. Um, and so I decided to start organizing things, uh, putting together the details, and I've been working on that for a couple months now. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be presenting to you today. Um, I've been on the trip as well. I have been a chaperone on this trip twice uh, in the past on, on um, the first ever trip to Costa Rica. And then a couple years later, I went um, with both of my daughters as well. So uh, I am familiar with the trip um, uh, and I've been to most of the places that we are gonna be going to. I've done most of the activities that we'll be doing. So I do have that familiarity. Um, so why are we going to Costa Rica? How does that fit in with uh, AP Environmental Science? Um, well, there's a lot of ways. You know, when I look through the daily itinerary, there's there's every single thing has some connection to the topics that we cover in uh, environmental science. We talk a lot about biomes and habitats and um, endangered species. And Costa Rica has unbelievable variety for a small country. It has a huge diversity in different types of habitats. We will be in the cloud forest, we'll be in the tropical rainforest, uh, we'll be at the mangrove, we'll be in the, the coastal Pacific coast, the central Pacific coast. And so in those areas, we're gonna be able to see just a huge variety of ecosystems, a huge variety of wildlife. Uh, I'll show you some pictures on the next slide of some of the different animals that, that we may see. Um, but you know, Costa Rica has amazing biodiversity. And that's one of the most important reasons why it's uh, a destination for ecotourism. You see um, you know, lots of different types of mammals and, and uh, reptiles and bird, birds, just a huge variety of different species that you know, likely you'll never see again unless you're back in Costa Rica. So it's really, um, really amazing. And we work with great guides that help in um, locating different species and, and using their uh, binoculars and monoscopes and, and helping students understand um, a little bit about the ecology of, of these different areas. Um, Costa Rica also is a country which um, really has a strong focus on sustainability. Um, Costa Rica um, in the last 30 or 40 years has sort of built itself upon the preservation of biodiversity. Um, it's a, a Central American country that has reforested large areas of the country. It's a country that pays um, farmers to preserve uh, native forests along with their agricultural products. Um, they are almost entirely, their energy production is almost entirely sustainable. Um, it is mostly renewable energy. Some days it's 100% renewable, but it's, it's a high 90s typically. Um, and um, ecotourism is an important part of the Costa Rican economy as well. So um, Costa Rica has a huge infrastructure in terms of tourism. They have a huge network of, of nat natural guides that um, are certified and trained by the government to provide uh, educational tours to groups. Uh, it's 8% of their um, GDP is based in tourism. So they're a country that welcomes tourists, they have the infrastructure, they have transportation, uh, just about everybody that we encounter from our end um, is bilingual and almost everybody we interact with speaks both English and Spanish. Um, so it's a, really a friendly country to visit as um, a resident of the United States. They accept US dollars almost everywhere. Um, so it makes things um, pretty easy to travel to uh, Costa Rica. 
And for me and my trips to Costa Rica, I, I would say the most valuable part of the trip for me and, and I think for students as well is to expand our perspective, to get outside of our bubble where we live and where we likely travel to and to see a much wider world beyond what we typically know, beyond the typical tourist destinations that some of us might travel to, to um, get out in the world and visit a developing country um, in Central America that um, will be unlike like anywhere that most of these students have ever visited. And to, to learn a lesson from that, to, to gain perspective, um, to see how people live in different sorts of countries and different types of lifestyles. I think that is really one of the uh, most important benefits of this trip. And what I, I say a lot of times is that sometimes in, on the trip, we're so busy and doing so many activities. I feel that sometimes students don't understand that until, you know, a year later, until five years later or 10 years later. And you think back on that experience that you had and, and certain things that Maybe they're not the zip lining adventures, things that you saw, people you interacted with, those things stick with you for a long, long time. And, and my own daughters have told me that, I felt it myself. Uh, it's definitely, for me, the highlight of, of a trip like this. Um, and for those students that do um, speak Spanish, that are studying Spanish at whatever level, it's great practice for uh, working on those language skills. So um, it's another great reason uh, to go to Costa Rica. So uh, here's just some of the, these are almost all um, Miss Cooper's photographs. I think I, I may have got the sloth might be from online. I think all the rest were hers. These are actual animals that we saw uh, on the trips that I, uh, I attended. Um, again, birder. Um, if if a, a student is a birder and, you know, it's, it's Costa Rica is like birding paradise because there are so many uh, diversity of species that you could see in a very small distance. Um, so we'll see a ton of wildlife and a ton of different ecosystems, different um, different environments. So like to go through just the sort of basics. Um, so the trip is next year's spring break. So 2022 spring break, April 9th through April 18th. Um, we are we will not have to miss any school for this trip. Some people have asked that question. Um, we won't be missing any school. We might be really tired in school on the 19th, um, but we won't have to miss any school. Uh, flights are not booked yet. Um, they will be in all likelihood from the New York City area, probably um, sometimes it's been Newark, other times JFK, uh, and they will be flights either into San Jose, Costa Rica, is the capital, the largest city in Costa Rica, or Liberia is the other international airport in Costa Rica. Um, sometimes, and ideally, we will arrange it so that our flight is overnight, sort of a red eye, in which we can fly overnight, students can sleep on the plane, we'll get in in the morning, and then have a full day um, ahead of us. Um, so that would be ideal, but again, I don't have that at this point. Um, the cost I'll talk about uh, towards the end of the presentation, but it will basically be all inclusive, um, you know, including all fees, all activities, guides, everything, um, except for things like spending money. I do have to give the official caveat that this is not an official New Hartford Central School District sponsored trip. This is an independent trip um, organized by me uh, and. Yes, all of you are New Hartford students, but this is not officially a school recognized trip. So uh, that's something I have to say. The, the company that we use, we've, all, we've always used since the first trip um, to organize everything is a, a Costa Rican company called Horizontes. Um, if, if you've ever looked into school trips before, you probably know there's lots of really big corporations that run trips like this, um, like EF or other, uh, other organizations like that. Horizontes is a Costa Rican company, and we appreciate um, supporting a Costa Rican business and Costa Rican um, employees. Uh, they're there on the ground in Costa Rica. Um, they're there if we ever need any help. Um, they're great to work with, uh, and they do things well. Um, they vet all of our 
activities, all of our hotels. Um, and so I feel very confident in where they send us and what sorts of activities um, they plan. And I've been working with um, uh, a woman from Horizontes for the last two months, putting together the itinerary, working all the details out, making adjustments and so forth. Uh, the other wonderful thing about this trip is a guide. Um, so Gustavo Abarca is a Costa Rican guide. He is native to San Jose, Costa Rica. He is um, a wonderful human being. He is a great guide. He has a ton of experience. He is guided for National Geographic and all sorts of other organizations, universities that send trips to Costa Rica. He, he guides trips to the Galapagos and he's really experienced. And we have worked with him now. This will be the sixth year. And having Gustavo as our guide was uh, really important to me because we have that relationship. Uh, him and I text back and forth about details all the time. Um, he knows what we want from our trip. He will be with us the entire trip, every bus ride, every hotel, Gustavo's there. Um, he will be providing you know, information along the bus ride. He, uh, will guide us on several of our hikes. And um, he is just so experienced and um, he enjoys working with us as well. He knows because we have this history, the, the types of students that we bring and how they behave and, and their um, curiosity and he, he enjoys working with us. So I'm very happy we have Gustavo um, because we have that relationship. And that is Gustavo there in the, in the lower right. So, I'll talk about sort of the itinerary. So we're going to Central America. That's where Costa Rica is. It's a very, very narrow country um, with a coast on the Caribbean, a coast in the Pacific. Um, we will be staying mostly in the north, uh, northern half of Costa Rica for this trip. Um, and here are our main destinations. Um, San Jose is where, likely where we will fly uh, into the other airports up here in Liberia, even farther north. We're gonna be making our way um, to the beach, to Punta Leona. We're gonna be making our way up to um, Rincon de la Vieja for the um, volcano. Uh, we'll then come over here to Monte Verde to the cloud forest, travel across um, the man-made um, Lake Arenal to La Fortuna over to Sarapiki, and finally, most likely back to San Jose for our flights out. So this is the northern part of the country. We're gonna be on the Pacific coast. Other years, we sometimes go on to the Caribbean coast or go to the southern parts of Costa Rica, sort of alternate that sometimes, but that's where we're going to be. Um, so I have a sort of walkthrough for you. You probably saw this if you looked through the materials I emailed you. Um, so I won't sort of read it all to you, but I will just um, kind of give you the highlights of sort of what these activities are, what's entailed, you know, what are we gonna be doing each day? Um, so we fly in uh, to San Jose likely, we'll meet up with Gustavo who'll be there at the airport waiting for us. Uh, and then we have a, a pretty long trip. So we'll be traveling in a bus, depending on the number of students, um, it could be sort of a full size coach bus or a smaller coach bus, um, just sort of depends how many people actually attend the trip. Uh, the bus is stocked with um, Costa Rican snacks at all times. We'll have a, um, um, a container of drinking water. Um, they really try to avoid single use plastics as, as do I. So students will be given actually a reusable water bottle that they could keep for the trip and refill on the bus as necessary. The water in Costa Rica is safe to drink. However, um, I've, I've always drank the water and uh, I've never had any problems, um, but there is bottled water available. Along the way, we are gonna be stopping for um, a river tour on a boat. Uh, it's a crocodile tour. Um, and this is just a picture from the company's website that's gonna do that. So uh, we'll be in route, we'll stop there, do the crocodile tour in the, along the river, we'll be in the mangrove ecosystem. Uh, and then we'll make our way to the hotel. Um, and so this first stop is at the beach. Hotel Punta Leona is on the Pacific. Um, the Pacific side of Costa Rica is beautiful with, with great swimming, great beaches. And we always set up the trip for 
uh, to have at least a solid day on the beach. Now, I ideally would like that day on our last day or two. However, because of the dates of our vacation, we are in a little bit of a rough um, scheduling situation. So the week we're away, the last weekend of the trip is actually Christian Holy Week. And in Costa Rica, um, Holy Week is a, um, a nationwide holiday in which Costa Rican um, nationals all go to the, many go to the beach and they take their vacation for often the entire week, uh, especially on Easter weekend. And so it is really difficult to get to the beach and get a hotel at a reasonable rate that can accommodate a large group. So we're actually doing this first uh, at the beginning of the week. So we'll spend the first two days at the beach uh, enjoying the sun, relaxing a little bit. These days we won't be as busy as the rest. Um, and um, we have the next day as well. So the next day is gonna be a, a beach day, uh, dinner, uh, overnight at the hotel. So it's gonna be um, a day and a half of enjoying the beach before we really get started with our um, intense activities. Uh, from there, we're gonna be traveling up to um, the volcano area, to Rincon de la Vieja. Costa Rica is on, it's sandwiched between four different um, tectonic plate boundaries. So it's extremely active in terms of volcanism. Um, there are several active volcanoes, um, none that are actively, um, spewing lava at the moment, um, but they have been active in the past. Um, sometimes they steam, sometimes they emit some material. Um, we haven't ever really seen that. One year we were almost delayed uh, or had to cancel our trip because of some activity, but uh, that hasn't been a problem in the past. So we're gonna be going uh, up to the volcano area where we're staying at this great, great, uh, I don't know what you would call, it, I guess a lot, almost a lodge. Um, it's sort of a working ranch style um, hotel. It's got some great amenities. It's not like you're on a, an actual ranch. You got a beautiful pool, outdoor areas, but um, they have a huge variety of activities right there at the hotel where you don't have to travel at all. So we will go horseback riding um, to uh, Waterfall. This is taken from there a few years ago. Um, it's go and swim at the base of the waterfall and relax for a little while. There's a tubing adventure we'll do there where you're tubing down the river. Um, those are really fun activities. They're, they're active. You know, kids really, really love those things. Um, we'll be back at that hotel for an, another night. Uh, and then the next day we will go to the national park. Uh, Costa Rica has huge national parks of preserved area. Um, and so we'll see sort of, this is a part of the Rincón de la Vieja volcano. There's sort of these mud pools of bubbling mud that are, you can see obviously are volcanically active. You can see a little bit about the ecosystem. Uh, we'll go back to the hotel after that. And then we'll do um, another activity, which includes um, zip lining and uh, rock climbing. Um, you can see a picture from, uh, from that activity. Uh, and then there's a hot spring. There's a natural mud and hot spring on the property as well, where you climb down to this area and they have maybe 10 or 12 pools of hot spring water. And they also have um, this sort of clay mud that they have in that river area and they put it in these big pots and, and people rub it all over themselves and then go in the hot springs to rinse it off. And it's and it's supposed to be exfoliating or good for your skin. I don't know if it really is, but it's, it's a lot of fun uh, as well. Uh, then we stay the night there again. Uh, from there, we make our way over to Monte Verde, which is in um, the cloud forest. Um, uh, the cloud forest is basically a tropical rainforest that is at an elevation where it is typically uh, in cloud cover for much of the time. It's a unique ecosystem. Um, it's, uh, the cloud forest has decreased from like 11% of the tropical rainforest to just 1%. In Costa Rica, this area called Monte Verde has th three different preserves of the cloud forest. And um, to do that sustainably, there are a bunch of different sort of um, 
ecological activities that are offered there. So when we are there, um, we're, this is the hotel we're staying at. It's this beautiful, looks like um, sort of Adirondack style camps overlooking um, this valley, uh, really nice hotel. Um, and while we're there, we will do the Sky Tram and Sky Trek, which is sort of a gondola sort of ride up to the top of the mountain where you have sort of a slow ride to look around and see the different ecosystems, see any wildlife. And then once you're there, um, there's this unbelievable zip lining um, course that they have. Uh, the zip lines go for more than a kilometer, some of them, and they go from one side of this valley to another. Sometimes you're zip lining in the clouds as you go through. Um, it's just absolutely unbelievable activity. And um, it's one of the favorite things that we do. So that zip lining adventure takes a little while. There's I think 10 or 12 different zip lines uh, and then a little hike between each one. Um, so it's, it's really unbelievable. Uh, after lunch, we'll go to um, a bat jungle exhibit. Um, to see some of the native bats of Costa Rica, uh, and then back to the hotel after that. From there, we will make our way to uh, La Fortuna, um, which is a town um, that is sort of at the base almost of um, the Arenal Volcano. And you can see that in this picture. Uh, it's actually pretty neat the, to get from Monteverde to La Fortuna, you could either take this extremely scary, windy, almost single lane road down the mountain and over to La Fortuna, which we did the first year I went on the trip in a huge coach bus. Um, it was scary, but it was an adventure. Um, however, there's also another route, which is a short Jeep ride to the lake uh, and then a boat ride across the lake and then another Jeep ride to La Fortuna. And that's the route we are going to be taking. Um, lake Arenal is a man-made lake. Uh, it, it's created by a dam which provides hydroelectric power to Costa Rica, um, but along that boat ride you get great views of the volcano itself. Uh, so we'll make our way to La Fortuna, which is a nice little town. It's pretty small. It's, um, um, if anybody goes to Costa Rica often, almost everybody is stopping in La Fortuna because they have um, a bunch of different activities there. It's a really popular spot for people to walk. So uh, after we make our way across the boat, we'll go to um, uh, Arenal National Park. Um, we will be walking. So in 1968, there was a, uh, an eruption of the Arenal volcano, which um, actually destroyed three villages. Um, and you went, the hike takes you sort of up the lava flow from 1968, which is kind of neat to see. Um, there is no active lava, so we're not going to be seeing flowing lava. Sometimes people, um, students think that we're going to be seeing like an active volcano in that manner. We won't, but we'll see sort of what happens when a volcano like that does, does erupt. Um, we'll get to the hotel, which is um, the Arenal Springs Hotel. This is a picture from it. It's just like, you know, you step outside your your, your room and you're at the pool and you have this unbelievable view of the volcano in front of you at almost all times. Oh, these, this is sort of the lava flow from the 1968 eruption. Uh, and then that night we'll go to the Baldy Hot Springs, which is, so obviously it's a very volcanically active area. So there are um, hot springs all over. And so there's five or six different facilities that sort of um, pipe in the hot springs water into a variety of different pools. The Baldy one is one that the kids love. It's got a water slide. It has like 15 different pools of various temperatures from almost scalding hot to freezing cold. And you could go from one pool to another. It's a, it's a really neat place. And we'll have dinner there as well. They do a nice, nice dinner slash hot springs. Um, we'll stay there um, until going back to the hotel at night. Uh, another day in uh, Arenal at La Fortuna, we'll have breakfast hotel. That's when we do canyoning. Um, canyoning is basically rappelling down a, a waterfall is the best way for me to describe it. So uh, I think that is me from one year. Uh, it's another one of our New Hartford students. Um, you get sort of harnessed in as you would when you're rock climbing. Um, they teach you how to rappel and then sort of make your way down uh, these waterfalls. There's probably seven or eight waterfalls of different heights. 
uh, and it's just really fun. Um, it's it's exciting. It's really uh, you know gets your adrenaline pumping. It, it's a, a really really fun activity. We will have lunch then after we're, do, we're done with the canyoning. We'll have lunch at a um, sustainable agriculture facility called Finca Don Juan, uh, where we'll learn about production of chocolate and um, coffee as well and sugarcane. Those are three important uh, agricultural crops in Costa Rica. Um, yes, this is where your chocolate comes from. Uh, and the, 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 when you do these chocolate tours, it's really cool because they open up the, the fruit of the um, chocolate plant, um, of the coca plant, and then they give you these slimy seeds and the kids can taste one and it obviously tastes nothing like chocolate. And then they walk you through the steps. How does this slimy gross seed uh, get dried and fermented and ground and mixed with other things? So you sort of get to make your own chocolate from the fruit to the final product and taste it along the way. It's just really, really neat, really fun to see where that, that comes from. Um, oh, we'll visit La Fortuna Waterfall as well. This is La Fortuna Waterfall. It's, I don't know, hundreds of feet tall. And actually uh, at the base is this pool that you can actually swim in. Uh, you can't really get close to the, to the uh, where the water is falling because you just can't physically get yourself there. The water's pushing you away um, so hard, but it's really a great spot for pictures and swimming. And, you know, it's like a place you've never seen before. I feel like that's all I'm saying though. It's unbelievable. You've never seen it before, uh, but I really feel like that. Uh, on day nine, getting towards the end of the trip, um, we'll be making our way to our last stop, which is Sarapiki, which is along the Sarapiki River. Uh, there we will do a, a tour of an organic pineapple farm. Uh, that's these pictures from a school trip. Um, and it's a really interesting tour. And they talk about both pineapple, pineapple agriculture as well as sort of the challenges of um, organic farming and the differences uh, between organic pineapples and non-organic. And, you know, they, they hop in the field, uh, the tour guy grabs some pineapples, hacks them up with a machete and then gives them to the students. And it's like the most unbelievable pineapple you've ever had in your life. Oh, there I go with that song, that's that word again, unbelievable. Um, and we will do rafting uh, on the Sarapiki River. Uh, yeah, that's me. My, that's my daughter's in here somewhere. That's that's a ton of fun. Whitewater rafting uh, because you know it's so rainy in Costa Rica. Uh, the rivers are running at all times, um, so we'll go out in a bunch of rafts. We have great guides. We stop along the way and swim in sort of a water, um, a little swimming area. They prepare some fruit for snacks for us. Um, so that's that's always a, a fun day as well. And so then that last night, that's the last sort of activity. Um, in the next day, depending on flights, um, we will make our way back to the airport. Um, and uh, this is where we'll be staying in uh, Sarapiki, the, the, um, this lodge, Kinkajou Lodge is what it's called, and uh, make our way back home and uh, arrive safely back in New York City, take a, a charter bus back home to New York. And that's sort of 10 days of um, activities. So, um, you know, when I people ask me about the trip a lot, and what I sometimes say is that if I ever brought my own family on this trip and planned all these activities for them, they would want to kill me uh, because it is just packed with, with fun and exciting things. It's definitely busy. Uh, you know, one thing we, each night we, we check on all the students, right? And we go check that they're in the room, everyone's safe, no leaving after we do our bed checks. Um, and every year, whatever the time is, maybe it's 10 o'clock, uh, we'll be going checking in the students. We're like, can we just do it at nine o'clock tomorrow? We're too tired. There's been too much going on today. They, they actually um, are, are ready to, to get some sleep uh, sometimes early. So it's, it's funny. Um, you think they wanna stay up as late as possible, but sometimes they, they actually don't. Um, so, you know, that's, it's that kind of trip. It's exciting, uh, it's action packed, it's, it's very busy um, and uh, it's just has a, a ton to offer that probably if you're going on vacation yourself, even if you were going to Rica, Costa Rica, you would probably not do all of these various activities on your own. But since we're on a school trip, we have a guide with us, we could sort of pack all this stuff in to, to uh, nine days, 10 days. 
All right, so let's get to the, 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 the cost part of this um, because it's significant. So if you looked in the um, information I sent from Horizontes, it's a little bit confusing in terms of how they break things down. So I've simplified that in this table here. Um, and so I'll explain all of this to you. Um, so the, the cost of the trip is broken up into sort of three categories. The part we have a, 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 a number for right now is the land portion, meaning all of our activities once we land at the airport through once we depart the airport. So that's pretty much set with those prices. Now that price varies with the number of students, obviously. Um, the fewer students generally, the, the more expensive the trip is as a whole. Uh, these are sample numbers. You know, if the number is higher than this or in between, you know, it, it may change slightly. Um, but it's in this ballpark. Um, that includes our guide that we have for all 10 days with us at all times, uh, all of our transportation in Costa Rica on the on, you know, nice coach bus, um, all of our hotel stays, uh, all of the meals in Costa Rica, all of the fees for zip lining and rafting and all of those activities, includes tips for the guides, and it includes taxes as well. So basically, you could go having paid this amount and not spend any more money. Um, you know, the only extra money that students need was money that they want to spend on their own to buy souvenirs or um, snacks or extra food, even though that's not necessary. There's snacks on the bus. We have three meals a day. So typically students aren't buying a lot of, a lot of other stuff. Um, so those are the, that's the amount we, we know pretty, pretty solidly. It could change slightly if we change our activities or, or things might change. But right now those, those numbers are pretty solid. The air is not, however. So we're not able to book our flights yet. We're right about on the time span in which they're gonna release our flights. So we don't know what the flights are going to cost from New York City to Costa Rica. Um, so what I put in here, $1,100, is the high end. I can't imagine it's going to be any more than that. And it may come in less than that. But I just don't know at this point. Um, things are in such flux um, in terms of travel and, and airlines. Um, you know, I guess I shouldn't say never, but I, I think it'll, that number should be somewhat close to accurate. And of course, I would let you know as soon as I know, I'll let you know what the what the flights are going to be. There's also this miscellaneous fee of $250. That includes the um, bus here from New Hartford to New York City and, and back. It includes uh, our t-shirts, includes photos. You know, when you go to like Disney World or something, I always trying to get you to buy the picture of you on the roller coaster or whatever. So we'll buy all those. In using this money, and then I will send them to everybody once we're back, back, um, back here. So all the photos from rafting, and you saw some of those photos will be included as well. Um, so the only things really not included in the price is spending money. It doesn't include any phone service. You know, we can talk about that um, as we get closer about you know if you want students to have uh, international phone service in Costa Rica, do you want them to buy a SIM card once we're there? It does not also. It also does not include food in the airport. Students want to buy food in the airport when they're there. So that puts probably the cost right around $4,200. Um, you know, and like I said, that can vary a little bit. Um, you know, what changes that price? Well, how many students, you know, actually commit and, and go on the trip is a big portion of this. The prices are quoted, and this one is what makes um, the pricing from Horizontes a little confusing. They quote their prices in double occupancy rooms but we always stay four to a room for the most part, um, which reduces the price somewhat. Um, so typically we do four students per room. The rooms have two beds, so two students share a bed. Um, and so, um, you know, there are options if a student wants to just be in a double or I guess to be in a single by themselves. I, I wouldn't recommend it, um, but, you know, we've always, Things have gone well with four students per room. Um, and if students, you know, uh, need help organizing with roommates and, and finding people to room with, we can, I can help with that as well. Um, but it's most economical, obviously, if we have four students per room. And the other thing that could change is the airfare. And 
Like I said, probably within a week or two, I'll know that. So that's a significant cost. And um, I'm not, uh, I'm certainly aware of that. And so I know that for families, that's a, a big commitment. It's a lot of money. Um, I feel that it is worthwhile, but that's, um, that's a big commitment for a family. I did do a little math this afternoon, however. And I did calculate, if my numbers are correct, that a student that starts working a minimum wage job in July will can pay for the entire trip themselves <laughs> by working just eight hours a week. So not that I'm, you know, your family do whatever is right for your family, but they could do it uh, if they really want to go that bad. So just something to, to, to uh, put out there. Um, so that's the details about the cost. Um, I guess now would be, well, I guess let me do this last step, then I'll answer your question. So where do we go next? So you've listened to me blab on here for whatever, a half hour. Uh, you've seen what we're going to do. Um, you know the cost, you know the price pretty much. So now what? Uh, maybe it's not for you and that's that's fine. Um, or maybe it is for you. Um, so the, the next step, is for if you have not done so to fill in this, this interest form. Basically, I've been getting like emails trickling in like four a day for the last three weeks. After this meeting, I'm pretty much gonna go from this form with my communication. Like if you filled out this form, I'll start emailing you at that email address rather than sort of me emailing people individually. So on this interest form, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, and I'll, I'll um, I should probably just put this in the chat. Let me do that real quick. Um, so I could email it out as well after the meeting. But here's the link. It's in the chat. Um, if you fill that out, I'm just asking for some basic information. Your students, name, first name, last name, email, what year they'll be in next year. Um, Although I'm not, I have not, and will not open up to 10th graders. I, sh I should have gotten rid of that. Um, preferred contact methods. So, and then here's really a, a, a question that helps me. You know, how likely, like, where are you? Um, where are you in this um, trip in terms of, are you a definite? Are you like leaning towards yes, most likely? Are you half and half? Or are you sort of saying, uh, it's probably not going to work for us? Um, you know, that's what I'm asking for here. Uh, and then any other comments or questions you want to address to me and I'll, I'll contact you um, personally to answer those questions. Um, so, you know, filling this out is not a commitment yet. I'll talk about that in a second. So, you know, if you tell me you're definitely going, but then, you know, in three days you say, oh, I'd have reconsidered, you're not committed yet. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So if you could fill this out sometime tonight or tomorrow, that, that would be helpful to me. Okay, so... Here's where we go from here. Next steps, if you could fill out that form if you've not already done so. I think I have it set up also so you can go back in and edit your response. So let's say maybe you saw this, and you're, oh yeah, I'm definitely going. You could go back in if you click that link and you might, you should be able to alter and say, yeah, I'm definitely going. Or maybe you wanna go the other way, it's up to you. Um, later tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to email you um, the terms and conditions for the trip that's put together by Horizonte, sort of the, the legal mumbo jumbo that you have to read and sort of agree to. There's also a student application. So if you're, if you're saying, okay, I, wanna, I want my son, my daughter to go on this trip, there's a student application form, which I will also email tomorrow. And I've included, there's just sort of basic information there. I also included a section for students to um, write just a little few sentences about why they want to go on this trip. I would like to read those sort of to help me get over my uh, apprehension that I talked about at the beginning of the of the meeting. Once that's done, uh, our initial deposit will be $500. That will commit you. That will ensure you have a spot. Um, and I would like to do that before the end of the school year. So you can send that um, as a check with your application um, with, with your son or daughter to school. You can, email, you can mail it to school uh, if you want to, if you feel better about that. Um, but that's the, that's the part that actually you know, commits you to going on the trip. 
um, and ensures that you have a spot. After that, I need to get the final cost with the flights. As I said, should be within a couple of weeks. Uh, I need to know how many people we're actually bringing with us. That determines the price. And then I'll have that total number for you. Um, you'll need a passport to travel to Costa Rica. So you, know, you might wanna start that process once you decide that you're going to be um, going. Uh, definitely, if you have passports, check the expiration on them. Uh, it does take a little while to get those renewed or to get a new passport. So start thinking about that. Uh, and then the rest of the payment um, for the land portion and the airfare, those payments will go to Horizontes. They handle that. If you're paying in check, it goes through me. So you could give me your checks, which are made out to Horizontes, the details will be coming. And then I send them to US Bank where they're deposited. You also can pay via credit card. Um, and to do that, you send an email to the woman we work with, her name is Cello. She sends you a link to a website and you pay via credit card uh, on that website. That's what I have always done. Um, typically what we do is we split the remaining payment outside of the deposit into two equal payments. That will be due um, later in the year. So probably one of them in 2021 and the second in 2022. Spread them out a little bit. And then finally, um, there is that the $250 fee for busing and t-shirts and pictures and that stuff. That is what I handle. So that's $250 that will, will go to me at towards the end, once we're getting close to the trip. Don't need to worry about that right now. Okay. So I know that is a lot. I'm gonna stop sharing here. And actually, if you could give me one second, my battery is gonna die, so I'm gonna go get my charger. So just give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. Did you miss me? Uh, all right, so how about questions? Happy to answer any question. If you have something you want to address privately to me, I could answer that, you know, phone call or email, um, but I could just take general questions. I just have a question about this is is re recording. Yes. Can you rebroadcast this later? Because Luke wasn't here, he was at a band yeah. concert. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to send an email with those documents I mentioned, and I'll also send a link to this video. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Mr. Duras. Yep. So where did you want us to write where we, uh, like, write the reason we were gone? Yeah, it's part of the application. So when I send the application tomorrow, there'll be, like, some, some info about yourself and things like that. And then at the end, there will be a little, say, a little thing I added that says, you know, just tell me why you want to go on the Costa Rica trip. All righty. Thanks, Joe. Wait, so Mr. Duros? Yep. Is there more than one hotel? I'm confused. Yeah, so there's like each place we go will be a different hotel. So I guess it's one, two, three, five different hotels we will be staying in throughout the entire trip. So basically we're sort of making a little loop around Northern Costa Rica from the airport to the beach, up to the volcano, to the mountains, across the lake and back to the airport. So yeah, there'll be several different um, hotels. All right. Thanks, Connor. Wait, Hi, there. I have a you um, $500, who do we write that out to? That's going to go, when I send you the, um, the terms and conditions, it's kind of a long, it goes to Horizontes, but they have sort of a long company name. Um, so that'll be, the details about that will be in, um, in the email that I send tomorrow. Is Mr. There any trip insurance? Yeah, so that would be that's a that's a great question. Um, and that would be something you would arrange yourself. Um, and the terms and conditions, there's cancellation policy. I'll just like so last spring when the trip got canceled, uh, just to give you a sense of how this went in the spring, um, 
you know, pretty much everybody had paid their full deposit, all of the trip costs, uh, and then it got canceled, right? It was kind of like back and forth. Do we cancel? Do we not cancel? Uh, what happened last year was basically everyone got um, all of their money back except for $500 from the flight. And actually, um, they may be getting that $500 back um, at some point. Um, so you can arrange your own personal um, travel insurance. And I could talk to the folks at Horizontes if that's something you know you definitely are interested in. Um, but generally, people do that sort of on their own. We wouldn't do it as a group. You would just arrange that likely individually. I'm actually, I forgot to mention this. I'm going to Costa Rica in July. Uh, just me and my daughter, who was supposed to go on the trip last year. And actually, currently, Costa Rica is requiring travelers to buy insurance in case they were to test positive for COVID. And the insurance covers your extended stay um, and your medical bills while you're there. So um, there are insurance options, and I'll know more about that when I, because it's a requirement. So I'm going to be purchasing that for our trip in July. Oh, I, I know, I'm sorry. One thing I forgot to mention, um, crime and safety, because that's been a question in the past as well. Um, so in all of the five years we've gone to this trip, um, there's never been any instances of crime. Uh, so our, our guide Gustavo is, um, grew up in San Jose. He knows the country extremely well. He has guided hundreds of trips. He knows exactly where to bring us, um, what areas not to bring us. Um, of course, there's crime in Costa Rica as there is anywhere, um, but that's never been um, an issue for uh, any of our trips. I've never felt unsafe um, in Costa Rica when I've been there on school trips. I'm confident going there in July with my daughter, just her and I, uh, traveling to m many of the same places that we'll be going next spring. Um, so, uh, I feel very comfortable in Costa Rica in terms of crime. Uh, in terms of safety or medical issues, it's another thing. We've never had any serious medical problem while on a school trip. We've had some minor um, things, like when, on the trips I've been on, um, we've dealt with some burns, from spilled coffee. Uh, we've dealt with um, hives, allergic reactions. Um, some sun poisoning um, for you know students that are not used to the lower latitude sun. Uh, I'll be all over them about their sunscreen. Um, but minor things like that, they always have been handled with, in local um, medical facilities, at pharmacies, things like that. And um, you know Gustavo is always when we've had some some issue like that. Gustavo has always sort of guided us through that where to go. Um, and so uh, uh, that's um, sort of the medical end. Um, as far as COVID vaccinations or, or COVID testing, I mean, who knows what the spring will be? I will tell you that currently Costa Rica does not require a vaccination um, to come into the country. They do require insurance. Um, COVID in Costa Rica, it, currently, they went through a pretty rough spell. So as I was telling you earlier about Holy Week, um, Costa Rica had a big spike after Holy Week. People traveled extensively, uh, and that led to um, sort of a spike in COVID cases in Costa Rica that are now starting to come down. Um, and, you know, they instituted sort of social distancing and things like that. Um, mask wearing and all those things and hand washing is from what I've been reading from my trip that I'm going on in July is uh, basically very strict. Um, so there's no vaccination requirement at this point to go into Costa Rica. And I, like I said, I have no, I don't know what the spring will bring. Okay, uh, other questions? Um. What's like the language? So, so Spanish is the language of Costa Rica, um, the native language, or not, I shouldn't say, it's not the native language, but Spanish is the primary language spoken in Costa Rica. Um, but 
pretty much anybody that's involved in the tourism industry, anybody that you interact with at the hotel and so forth, um, mostly speak English. Uh, like I said, so much of their economy is built on tourism that most people that you interact with speak English uh, quite well. Mr. Diros? Yep. Um, so do we get to pick what you room with or are you going to assign it? Um, no, generally what will happen is you can pick, you can organize on your own. If you know some people you would be comfortable rooming with. Uh, if you didn't have somebody, um, I can work with other people and try to arrange so that we have our, you know, our four in a room if that's what we're looking at. So now generally you can, you can pick your roommates. Um, oh, I did have enough. Yeah. So yeah, you, you pick your roommates typically. Um, I, so chaperones, I didn't mention that. So uh, depending on the number of students will determine how many chaperones go. So I will be going, obviously. Um, Mr. Romanow is going to be going as well. Um, and I'm not sure how many or what other chaperones there will be, but um, I always like to travel with people I'm, I'm comfortable with and people that I like and people that students like. So uh, it's always it's always fun. And so I'm really happy. Are you that. are um, you only doing um, teacher chaperones? Yes. Yes, only teacher chaperones. Oh, an, um, another thing that I thought of. So a, lot, a bunch of people have asked me, "Why well, are you going to do this trip again in 2023? Like juniors have asked that question. Like I think what they're thinking is, well, I might want to go, this would be a great way to end my senior year. And that's probably, would be a great way to end your senior year, but I, I can't commit to that. So I can't say for sure that, in 2023, I'm going to have another trip. Like if a trip went poorly, if things, for whatever reason, I just can't deal with it again, you know, that's a possibility. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You know, some people, I know in the past, students have, have taken that risk and said, well, I'm not going to go when I'm a junior. I'm hoping it's going to go when I'm a senior. But obviously students like my daughter that did that last year, kind of lost out right because the trip was canceled or you know something doesn't work out um, so the numbers might not be enough so it is a, a, a risk or a gamble if if that's something you're thinking of so I can't guarantee there will be another trip in 2023 there very well maybe but there might not be so sorry juniors it's not very helpful I know any other questions You'll be sending packets? Yep. So we've already filled out the forms previously? Okay. Yep, so if you filled out the interest form, that's first. If you feel differently, if you could update it with your interest level especially, it would be great. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna email a couple attachments. I'll email them to whatever emails you put on the interest form. Uh, there will be an application for you to fill out and for a student to write their statement about why they wanna go. There'll be terms and conditions. And there will be a, an updated itinerary as well with the day by day things because the numbers changed a little bit at the end. Um, after that, um, once you decide for sure, uh, I'll be accepting deposits. And you know that's obviously you know when I start to know what the actual number of of people taking the trip will be. Once I have the deposit, I know you know we're we're, we're good with that number. So. Um, yeah, that, those, those are sort of the next steps. Uh, I'm always available. If you have any questions, feel free to call me at school or shoot an email or, or whatever. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have if you want to ask them privately or um, if you have uh, anything else that comes up in the next uh, couple of days, feel free to um, contact me. Uh, another question, there, there aren't any other vaccination requirements to travel to Costa Rica. Um, there's no special um, vaccines required. Where do you get the interest form? Uh, there's, um, Riley, I, I posted it in the chat. I'll also put it in the email that I send out. And um, yeah. So it's sort of like, okay, if I fill it out tomorrow when I get the email. Yeah, that's, or can you see it in the chat? Um, I don't think so, because I was late to the Zoom. Yeah, I just put it again. So now, oh wait, I sent that directly to somebody, sorry. Um, 
maybe it'll show up now for you if you. Uh, it, was, it was also in one of the emails I forwarded to you from my, the last meeting, I think, but I can send it in the email tomorrow. Okay, so hopefully um, I will be seeing uh, some of those forms come in and I hope lots of you or all of you can, can join us next year. I'm super excited about the trip um, because I love it so much. Uh, you know, I, I really am looking forward to sharing it with students and it, it really is the experience of a lifetime, but you've heard me say that like seven times. So I'll say it uh, <laughs> the last time. All right, so if anyone has any more questions, um, that's all. So thanks everybody for giving up some time on your uh, Thursday night. Thank you. Thank, have you. Great, Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Meg. I actually have a quick question about um, yeah. environmental science. Okay. Um, for next year, because, okay, so I'm taking like AP Bio and mm -hmm. AP Calc, among other courses. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mainly like the AP Bio that kind of scares me in terms of like, how, I don't know, like what's the workload for environmental science and how yeah. would you? rate it like you know is yeah. it possible to take it is but i have i had two students this year that took ap bio and apes at the same time um anthony okay. campola and nabil i don't know if you know either of them but yeah, yeah they took them both uh unfortunately the ap exam was on the same day for both courses so they oh. had to take them both on the same day uh, you okay. can if it's in your schedule you can do it um environmental science Students told me this year, I was because I was asking them this, they, they were asked, I was asking them what you thought. Um, I do a flipped classroom. So what you mostly what you do at home is watch the videos of our notes. And most of our activities we do in class and we do the labs in class. Sometimes you have to do some at home as well. Um, but I would say it's, it's an AP class, but it's not the toughest in terms of workload AP class that you've taken. That's, that's what I would okay. say. I don't know if that's helpful at all. Okay. I think it's definitely not as much work as AP Chem if you take if you took AP right. Chem. Okay. Um, and it's it's super relatable in terms of like tons of topics apply to things you see every day, things you read in the news, and also a lot of it builds on things you learned in earth science or in bio or AP bio. There's a lot of connections to other classes, so um, there's a lot of overlap as well. Okay. Yeah. But and if, right. you can't, if it doesn't fit, I mean, you don't have to take it, Grace. Like, if you want to go on the trip, you know, you're not, it's not. Right. I was already thinking about taking it. Like, I just wasn't sure. Like, yeah. I kind of put down the classes that I knew, like, I really wanted to take. And then, like, I don't know. I'm just trying to decide yeah. still, like, how feasible it's, it is. <laughs> yeah. And some people I know, like, I had three students that sort of dropped within the first three or four weeks because, you know, they were in a had a tough schedule and it was just, you know, too, a little too much and that's no big deal either. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm like, I just want to consider it. So yeah, yeah, um, definitely. No, it's a great class. I really love teaching it. Uh, it's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Okay. But then you'd have to have me three years out of your high school career. And exactly. I don't know, I don't know if anyone wants to subject themselves to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll definitely think about it and see okay. if it like fits in my schedule because I do want to take it. I'm just not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Consider it. But yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Have no a problem, good night. Grace. See you later. See ya. Bye.